I love your staff. I really do. Those are two good players. So there's here's the, the card. Here's the card I was super yeah, geeked nice out one. about. Yeah. Why sell then? What's the driver behind this? Some things with the family going on that kind of put me into a spot where I feel like that's more important. You know, the lawyer wants $150,000 cash. Fentanyl is a big deal, and to hear it affect his life and his circle of friends. And the Aaron and the Mantle, you don't feel good enough to send those in, huh? Nope. I wouldn't even waste your money. Brad Hubbard. That's a good one, right? Originals. Um, I don't know anything about these, dude. <laughs> The history of sports cards goes back over a hundred years. We are on the pursuit to find the biggest and most interesting sports card collections across the United States. Join us as we travel the large interstates and the narrow unpaved roads in our journey to continue chasing cardboard. Today we're in Chelan, Washington. It's a hidden gem of a town. You're nestled in between some canyons and the Cascade Mountains. You got a lake over here. I'm really excited that we're up here today. The weather's beautiful. You may know Chelan because of all the fruit they grow up here. They have apples and, and pears and lots of variety of cherries. Uh, so some of the fruit that you may have eaten lately might have come from Chelan, Washington. Uh, I just had a good cup of Vogue coffee as well. But today we're going to meet a gentleman named Eric who reached out to us a few months ago I said, hey man, I got this cool collection. I think it might be perfect for you guys. We're gonna go meet Eric, see his collection, hear his story, and enjoy this beautiful city. You know, we see a lot of pictures. People send us collections and, and there's a lot to get excited about. We've seen some unbelievable cards. But today's collection is one of those where I really got excited because there's some cards in here that you just don't see very often. You don't see the credentials cards pop up really ever in collections and let alone a King Griffey Jr. up here in the Pacific Northwest. Cards like that draw me in as a collector. I can't wait to go unpack it this guy. I can look at cards all day in this weather. All right. Hey, how you doing? Tyler. Tyler. Pleasure. Good to Welcome meet you, to man. Chelan. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So tell me the story of Chelan. I mean, what's the story here? It's a little hidden gem. Uh, everybody yeah. from the Wenatchee Valley, you know, usually comes up here for vacations, et cetera. Okay. Same with Seattle, all that place. Uh, it's just the lake is a super popular spot. We got the water slides. Uh, you got Lake Stahican, which is a 25 mile boat ride. Okay. And they got cabins and places you can stay. Uh, there's always like wild bears and elk and deer and everything around. So it's it's really connected with nature up there. Okay. And I think that's why people come here more or less. Would you consider this a tourist town? Or it, it is. Now? Yeah, it's, it is now. It, yeah. it didn't used to be. It was more an orchard town back in the day okay. when I grew up as a kid. And it just kind of switched, you know what I mean? And, and even people from Wenatchee, this is where we'd come. We're like, hey, let's really? just go up to the lake for the day. And, you know, instead yeah. of going, you know, somewhere else. So you had the Chelan fruit factory or whatever, the warehouse. Yes. And all those crazy nice homes along the river. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's probably what you got, happened. Like what's her name, Leslie Lohan and all those kind of people. You got okay. all the uh, Seattle Seahawks and things yeah. like that that live down in those areas. Uh, and then you got Toontown, which was that funny like hillside as you're coming up and it's just yeah. nothing but coated in houses. That's another area they like to flock to. So wow. yeah. wow. a lot of money, a, a lot of money. Chelan sounds incredible, right? The history of, of this town and the way it's been built up, now it's kind of transitioning into a tourist town. Uh, it, I, very similar to the city we live in and probably very similar to some of these beautiful areas around the Pacific Northwest and the Rockies. They don't stay hidden very long. So you got some cards? Yep. Got them in the back room here. Wanna Sweet. take a look? Yeah, yeah let's see sounds good. I started collecting as a kid in uh, you know the, the mid, early 90s um, and then I got out of the hobby for a while during my teenage time and uh, recently stepped back in in the adult time during the COVID phase. Uh, it, it just sparked, you know, a wire in my body and it, it that same interest as a, a kid brought back to me. So that same joy was there during that collecting process. So did so, you have to move them all from Wisconsin up here? How this, how you this know, work? I did, yeah. I moved a bunch of them back from Wisconsin oh, um, because I ended up buying a lot. Um, back in chicago okay and i ended up taking it back with me and at that point we had 
bought in a bunch of just, you know, standard 60s, yeah. 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, junk wax era, all that mixed in. So really interesting. He lived up in, in Wisconsin, was born and raised here, bought most of these collections and cards in the Green Bay area and then transported them all the way back here to this small mountain town. It just shows, right? These collections are hidden everywhere. When I first started going through cards because I missed out on a certain era, you know, I was a collector in my younger yeah. age and then I came back in after the COVID thing. Okay. So I was going through, flipping through, and I just started looking at cards. I'm like, who's this freaking guy? Look how young he <laughs> looks. You know what I mean? Just kind of shocked yeah. how young he looked on the card. And I just kind of tossed it out of my way and come to find out it was a Stephen what is that, the Stephen Curry mm -hmm. rookie card where he's kind of got the smile and whatnot. Yeah. I had no idea what the value of the card was and I'm pretty sure I tossed it into a pile that I gave away. Um, so lesson learned, but there's so much of that collection that I still haven't had a chance to even touch because it's overwhelming. You know what I mean? You yeah. get to a certain point and you're just like, okay, I'm, my brain has had enough cards for the day. And I don't ever reach that point, just so you know. You're so lucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish, I wish. Um, so you were buying collections? I was, yeah. Okay. If, I put an ad out on um, Marketplace, yeah. you know, looking for cards, baseball, basketball, football, anything, Pokemon, you know, magic, whatever it was. Okay. And I'd get a couple people who would, you know, hit me up and I'd know either if it was worth it or not. Okay. Knowing on what type of the cards, what era of the cards, sure. a lot of junk wax, a lot of people try to throw yeah. at you, right? and you know the value isn't really there. It's a very small number of cards that actually hold the value in mm -hmm. those eras. So um, a lot of them I passed up. So pandemic buyer here kind of went all in during the, the crazy rise. Um, you know, he, he acquired a lot in those couple $4,000 collections. It looks like he made really good buys, but he then piled on top of that by buying a lot of sealed product and opening it. Um, so look, he knows the reality of that. He paid high prices, but he also pulled a lot of really good stuff through collections. So it's a good balance. You can tell it, it's definitely sucked him into the hobby, probably long-term. A couple of them that I did buy from people, uh, of course, like the baseballs that I have, yep. uh, that was part of a bigger collection that I'd pay for like four grand, okay. you know, and I got a bunch of cards with them as well. And, um, you know, on the back of each one, oh, was, it does have its own little stamp seal. Okay. So it kind of gave me a little indication. I was like, okay, well, I have a little bit more faith in these. Sure. Um, and not only that, the gentleman that I bought these from was 80 years old. And he's had these since the 80s. So that told me, I was like, you know, I, I really trust this guy. He had really good cards. I feel yeah. like he wouldn't collect stuff that would be fake or junk. They, yeah. look, they look pretty good, man. Yeah, they do. And that's also another thing that I did was, you know, go online. I'd look yeah. at the autograph. I'd like Mickey Mantle and look at 15 of them, you know, or more and, and be able to determine if it was real or not, right? Yeah. You can kind of get a good idea. So I went over a lot of these and the signatures just matched identically. And I was like, okay, well, this has to be, you know, a good yeah. sign versus something awesome. that, uh, yeah. Awesome. I tried to focus on just keeping more of the better cards on this side. And then a lot of the, the unknowns are okay. kind of over here. Uh, just stuff that I haven't really had time or I don't really know the players too well to be mm -hmm. like, hey, I know this guy from the 70s or 60s and he's probably good or not. Yeah. And when you have so many, I feel like I don't want to sit there and try to look up every guy. Um, of course, when you get on Sports Card Investor app and things, you see random cards, you're like, I've got that one. Mm -hmm. So you go through your collection, try to pull them out and put them in a top loader and save those for yeah. you know future ideas. But Okay. So it sounds like you enjoy this. It's kept me going. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when I get through the winter and I don't know what to do with myself, you know, properties and houses start to slow down. So it was a perfect time for me to like keep that happiness and, and drive and motivation. And sure. I would spend, you know, a couple grand every month on getting hobby boxes from Green Bay City Cards okay. and, and just Shout stacking Green up. Green Bay City and, Cards, huh? Yeah, yeah, they're really good people. Yeah, Yeah, cool. really good people. Um, I've hit some really good numbered cards out of there. Uh, you know, Kenny Pickett gold to 10 and things like that, that, you know, I sold off of course, yeah. but yeah. Uh, the quick sells. I've hit, you know, some golds out of retail, some autos out of retail, but as far as the majority of bigger hits and guaranteed better cards is hobby 100%. It's, that's just what I've learned so far. I see you strategically placed that Bobby Witt out there for me. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I, know, I do know you like Bobby. So cards like this, it looks like a lot of new stuff that maybe you ripped and in boxes. And yeah, oh yeah, everything questions. that's new is something I ripped. Uh, a lot of the older stuff I had found in some of the collections and just, you know, random stuff that I knew that could have a value. 
So who did you gravitate towards? I mean, who did you collect? What, who got you really excited? I think Pickett really got me si excited, you know, when he started coming around. And I think we put a lot of hope into him <laughs> and uh, just didn't turn around. Um, and luckily, Purdy, Purdy was around too, so yeah, I started to look into him. That's some good taste. I try. And I think I have one of those as well, but it's numbered to 200 of Tiffany Brady. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, it's in one of these boxes. We'll find it. Tons of Ichiro pool hole rookies. Yeah. So um, how were you selling? You mentioned you sold a couple cars before. What was your That's number 15. Now? A good old... Uh, the, uh, Michael Harris? No. The, oh, the O'Neill Cruz. Yeah. O'Neill Cruz That's Auto. That's awesome. To 15. Did you sell through eBay or did you sell through Facebook Marketplace? Marketplace and uh, through card shops. Oh, okay. That, that was it. Yeah. I uh, tried to do the eBay thing, but I didn't really have any luck. I'm not too experienced with whole, you know, the, the web thing. Um, but it was my easiest, easiest way to do it. And then once I had the certain clients, they kept coming back and purchasing. Yeah. So I knew that I could trust that group of people. Yeah. 2002 Platinum Wheelhouse, Derek Jeter. I've got the Griffies. I've got the Thomases. Huh. I've got, you know. It's a cool insert. Yeah. That's a cool car, man. Yeah. Yeah. The Randy, Randy Moss, Moss. Jersey Auto. Yep. That's super sick. There's a that bunch of uh, things like that. Cool, man. This is, this is awesome. Yeah. I love this stuff. Good. I love it. So one of the things I pay attention to is how much people know about their sports. And, and Eric understands the players. He's He knows what he's going after um, for key products, but you can tell he hasn't maybe paid attention for the last 30 years of certain players. And so late 90s, mid 2000s, he may not care about certain players like the rest of the hobby does. And so you find maybe opportunity for cars that he pushed aside that might be more valuable than he thinks. That's intriguing to me. So uh, all these are autos. Okay. And these are all patch slash autos, I think. Some of them um, are just patch. A lot of them are patch, I should say. Okay. There's only a couple. Chipper Jones Chipper Auto. Chipper Jones Auto patch. Dang, dude. A bunch of... Do um, you I put think, them all uh, on the one touches or? The Edgar Martinez, he's got a signature there. So when you were buying, this is in the last two, two three years, right? Yeah. Yep, everything came within the past two, three years. So you were in the middle of the peak, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. How yep. was it buying collections two, three years ago in, in Wisconsin? It was good. I mean, there was a like healthy amount of opportunities? There was a lot of opportunity. Um, a lot of people, uh, like I said, would hit me up and then I would, you know, a lot of junk wax, et cetera. Um, and then there was a couple of people that just had really good clean collections that I would focus on. Yeah. Just awesome stuff, man. All sports. Mm -hmm. Love it. it is a mix, yeah. That one's numbered to 50. Oh, that's his so -so? MPB signature. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Some good Edgar. I mean, I guess you're on. Yeah, class. right here, yeah. A lot of people collected them. So it's kind of a mix of some of the stuff that I hit and then yeah. stuff that I had accumulated during collections, like Long the Bowman Vest. So when you would buy collections and they would have, you know, these autos in it, how did you view them? Just take it with a take it, take, take a shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's something that I figured um, if they put it in a penny sleeve and, uh, you know, oh, and, and those things I felt like um, when I found those, it came with another card that had like something made out to the guy. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this guy obviously went to ball games. Yeah. And had them sign cards. So that's kind of where that came from. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool, man. Yeah, this is, uh, this, this is cool. So I'm so in love with this collection. Like... I just want to sit there and go through every single box. You know, so many times I get these collections and I know 80 or 90% of it's stuff that I'm just going to push aside and focus on these couple boxes. I mean, every single box has something that's drawing me in. That's very rare to find in a collection of this size. You looking yeah. to sell everything then? Like, I would love to sell everything, honestly. Okay. I, there's a lot of stuff, like I said, that I, I feel like there'll be some gems hidden. Okay. For sure. Like, I know that, you know what I mean? And that's something that I'm ready to pass down to somebody else to, you know, go through that process and experience. Okay. So he wants to sell everything. Like he's speaking my language, right? Now we just got to go find a way to, to get a deal done, find enough to get us excited. And we're going to fill our expedition full of cards. So what, why, why sell then? What's the driver behind this? Just some things with the family going on okay. that kind of put me into a spot where I feel like that's more important. Yeah, so the point with me is like just to pass down the collection to good people, uh, let everybody else experience what I've collected and have the same fun that I had with it. 
Um, the money, of course, which whatever I get out of my collection will be basically put towards helping my sister out who's in a, in a situation, so. Family situations like this one are extremely personal, but after discussing with Eric off camera, he agreed it was okay to talk about it while filming. I've lost like seven friends to fentanyl in the past three years. People I grew up with as a kid, and I never would have expected these people to step into that realm. Last year I lost like four of them, and the year before there was three of them. So, and the other guy, they just found CJ, they found him dead in a porter potty from an overdose. So, yeah. Is that It's a very serious thing. It's scary because it's, it's a, one of the worst epidemics in our country. Fentanyl is a highly potent opioid. It's at least 50 times more potent than heroin. People are being exposed to fentanyl without knowing it. And because it's so highly potent, people are dying at unprecedented rates. Officer Courtney Bannock, who was wearing gloves, is believed to have been exposed to the lethal opioid while examining rolled up dollar bills the police say contain fentanyl. From 2019 to 2021, overdose deaths among 10 to 19 year olds in the United States, more than double. The drug is powerful. I mean, I was watching videos and these cops are going in the back of cars and they're just falling over and having overdoses and they have to stick a thing in their nose to bring them back to life. And those are cops who are just doing their job. They didn't even touch, you know, the drug. They yeah. just opened the back of a, a thing and the stuff was in the air. Yeah. So, I don't know, it's scary. So how has fentanyl affected your family then? Tremendously. Um, it's, it's taken my sister's, you know, life from her at this point. You know, she's been in jail for eight months. You know mm. what I mean? It's, it's to the point to where it'll take a while for, for everything to go back to normal. Okay. You know what I mean? She doesn't have a, a place to go back to. She's lost pretty much everything in her life mm. from this drug. So what we want to do is get her out and, you know, mm. put her back on the right track and around the right people and to stay away from those certain things. So, yeah. Yeah. Does this have anything to do with that? Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay. Um, uh, it, it's a lot of the money will be supporting her. Mm. Uh, there's commentary, there's phone calls, there's the, the list goes on. So it's anywhere from like three to 400 bucks a week. Oh man. Just to help her, you know, out because she don't eat the regular food in there. So yeah, um, there's a, uh, you know, the lawyer wants $150,000 to, huh. yeah, cash. And we have to pay him up front before he even like has been doing anything. So we get the phone calls. Hey, I need some more money. I need some more money. So that's kind of where um, this collection will be heading towards is to help my mom with that aspect. Jeez, so, man. It's, it's all about family. It's never about uh, the value of anything to me because you can never put a value on someone's life. So I think that's the most important part. I feel like it's changed her life and she's back to the person that I once knew. And, and, and she's aware of what the drug has done to her. And, and I think that when she gets out, she'll be able to keep that straight head and knowingly that this isn't what she wants with herself. Gotcha. You know, she was a 4.0 4. grade average, uh, college graduate, degrees, everything. And it just went, you know, the opposite way, unfortunately. Yeah. So, man, that's super, super sad to hear. So it sounds like fentanyl kind of played a role in his sister's situation and some of this money is going to help kind of get her out of the situation. But the fentanyl pandemic, like a true pandemic right now with fentanyl, with the way it's affecting our youth, affecting older people, you know, wealthy, poor, fentanyl is a big deal. And to hear it affect his life and his circle of friends and his sister, Man, it's so sad to hear. Well, that's helpful. It's good to know what this is specifically going towards because it yeah, motivates me more yeah, to find it, it'll as much value family. as possible. And um, that's, you know, like I said, uh, materialistic items don't really have a meaning to me really in life. It's yeah. something that I can enjoy and pass down for somebody else to enjoy. That's mm -hmm. the enjoyment I get. So no matter what I own, I try not to attach myself to it. Hmm. So, you know, we came to look at a collection and cards and cool cards. But now that we're understanding the motive behind the cell, it makes it more meaningful, not just for him, but for me, right? I wanna find a way to kind of help, help the family and play my role in grabbing cards and contributing back to you know, a problem they're solving. Well, I'm gonna put another card up here. <laughs> Stay motivated, a little MJ Melendez. <laughs> <laughs> Totals, yeah, that's, dude, that's, yeah, that's, that's nice. a cool Manning Auto. Yeah, I really like that from his younger years. That's cool. That's a nice card. 
And that box right there, that's a loaded box. I have full boxes full of Griffies, <laughs> dude. Like number to 20, the number to 27. And like, there's some very good Griffies I got. Oh yeah, I do want to see that one. That's, you yeah. have the credentials one. That red one in the red uniform. Yep. That was in the picture. That's a mm -hmm. good, that's a goodie. Hey, look, if you love chasing cardboard and you're looking for more ways to access content from the team, I've got some really good news. Head over to ChasingCardboardPlus.com right now and you can access a daily vlog. I know, I'm doing a daily vlog. You can access episode talk-throughs and podcasts, financial breakdowns, and even Matt Coleman showing us how he makes episodes of Chasing Cardboard. There's all kinds of great content over there for $9 a month. We love to put out extra stuff. You gotta go over to Chasing Cardboard Plus to find it. We'd love to see you there. Take care. So I'm gonna call Mike Moynihan. Okay. Uh, I sent him pictures of these balls. Okay. He's been asking some friends about yeah. the COA, the certificate of authenticity, and yep. then the autos, right? Mm -hmm. So let's see what he has to say. Perfect. I think he's at a golf course. So. Oh, nice. It's perfect. What a tough life. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Meet my friend Eric. Hey, Eric. Howdy, Mike. What you doing? You playing some golf? Oh, nice. Yes. Can't beat that. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. Well, I actually think we can beat your view right now. I'm <laughs> okay. sure you can. Yeah. Let me guess. You're uh, you're seven under. Uh, no. I'm one over. Right now. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. After I skip a few holes. Yeah, there you, you go. You see me make a par putt? Let's you see. see me make a par putt? Let's yeah. see. Hang on. Let me flip this around. Sweet. How do we know it's a par putt? Pep <laughs> can tell you. I think it's a seven, but yeah. <laughs> oh man. Nice. Look at this guy, Dude, pro. Okay. Sinks it. So is that a robotic ball? Is that the robotic ball you're playing with now? It's a, it's a, it's a pole seeker ball. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a missile seeker. Uh, right. Hey, dude. So you sent the, you saw the pictures I sent over. I did. Can we talk about those for a minute? You want to see some close-ups? What do you, what are you thinking? Uh, the, the COA is sketch. Okay. Um, I sent them to several guys. None of them thought, especially like the Hank Aaron. The Yaz, like there were some that were just absolutely no. I thought that instantly about those as well. Okay. And so once you have one or two that are bad, it's kind of like, well, how do, can you trust the rest? Yeah. You know? Okay. Um, and so that's just part of it, right? Sure. Um, so the big one, I, I haven't seen the mantle up close. So you want to show me that one? Sure. But if it's got banana hems, which I'll tell you in a second if it's got banana M's. Banana M's, huh? Bananas. So there's the mantle. Actually, that looks okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, it's got the banana M's, but I, God, it looks too good. <laughs> you don't want it to look too good, right? Yeah. That looks... I would say no to that, actually. Interesting. Um, Sorry. Hey, well, that's what I'm calling you. You know, Eric, I got these in a, in a collection years yep. ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. And the guy had them in his collection from the 80s. Older, older gentleman, 80 years old. What do you say? I said older collection. You don't know the story. We didn't see him sign them. Always true. And I, again, that's not a reputable certificate of authenticity you know someone i would if it was psa obviously or jsa then you it's done deal right yeah you'd be like okay you know but uh yeah and i was gonna to i was gonna I send some men to to see about that because i was trying to find a way to submit them through psa i just didn't know the process yeah yeah, yeah it's kind of kind of different mm -hmm. I, I just sent in a babe ruth so. yeah we know all about that nice um okay so do any of those look good enough to potentially send in do you feel comfortable with any of them was the only one we, we all consensus thought was good, the Jim Catfish Hunter. Okay. But that's not worth submitting. It's not even not yeah. valuable. Yeah, not valuable. You mm -hmm. know? So you have to weigh that as well. 
Okay. And the Aaron and the mantle, you don't you don't feel good enough to send those in, huh? Nope. I wouldn't even waste your money. Pull up the Aaron and I'll show you. If you grab it, I'll show you. The Aaron I was worried about too because it did look a little different on the Aaron. That was something that I couldn't find anything to resemble. Yes. So that's a classic secretarial Aaron right there. The A and the A are supposed to be more separated. Like they had somebody and sign that, for him. Yeah. Yeah, that's totally not an H for him. Either. That's no bueno. Okay. Not bad. I wouldn't even send it. Okay. Well, good to know. Yeah. Sorry. No, you're good. Okay. Seeing you make the putt was all worth it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> right? All right, man. <clears throat> Appreciate the time. Good luck in your round. Right. Uh, fun. Nice to meet you. Yes, you too, sir. Take care. Enjoy right. your golf. Take care. Bye. Bye. So it was good to get a second opinion uh, from Mike and Mike probably asked a couple guys that he knew. It sounds like he did. You know, it's not end all be all. It doesn't mean it's the absolute truth, but it's, it's good to have that before you go spend a bunch of extra money on an unauthenticated autograph like Mickey Mantle or Hank Aaron. So a little bummed about the Hank Aaron. It sounds like we might be a little suspect on the Mickey Mantle and a couple of the other autos might be legit, but overall probably not as excited about the autos and the balls. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good it's know, what it right? is. Yeah, it's yeah. what it is, right? I don't, I don't mind taking the time and doing it myself. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like some of the balls, I guarantee that I know they're enough match to me that yeah, if I can get it, it authenticated through PSA, sure, I can, I can go that route for sure. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I'm probably the same way. Like, I, I mean, yeah, we can figure that out. Yeah. So Mike is suspect on the autos. What do you think? Does the Mickey look real? Does the Hank Aaron look real? Any of these autographs look interesting to you? A lot of these, uh, <clears throat> you'll find boxes with just a bunch of random, a lot of, you know, name people yeah. um, that go through here. A lot of good cards. Yeah. Um, so it was just, uh, there's a nice little old yeah, Hank cool. Aaron. One. Uh, there is some numbered cards okay. in here as well. So a it's all of, mix and match kind of thing. It, it really stuff. is, yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, um, there's a lot of that in here. A lot of Ichiro's again. Um, mosses. Did you start kind of grabbing things from various collections and putting them in boxes or did, are these like fresh from collections still? Yeah, there's a lot just fresh from collections. Uh, then there's some stuff that I pieced together. There's so much stuff, dude. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Um, I should have. No, squeeze here. Okay. <laughs> Football. This is like chasing cardboard heaven. <laughs> you know, because Eric did a good job of kind of curating collections and but didn't put the time into pulling every good card out. Unfortunately. So it's, hey, I paid some of the tax, but now you can go take the fun <laughs> home and, and do, do the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it just goes on and on and on. Let me stop you right there. If we get this collection today, it's all going to whatnot. In fact, look in the show notes right now and click the WhatNot link. You'll get access to our current auction schedule and you'll be able to see everything we are doing on the WhatNot platform. It's kind of all the new rookies, I guess, for the year. So are you- Lamala Balls. Are you a sports fan? You know- like, Do you watch sports? I watch football. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I like football for some reason. Baseball's too slow for me. Um, basketball, I don't, I don't, never really got into it. You don't watch baseball. You don't watch basketball a lot. I keep up with the scores and, and the yeah. players. I watch all the new, like, uh, the hype reels and okay. what's going on. I try to keep up with that to, to know who to collect and who to chase yeah. after kind of thing. So. so what then is the draw for you? Like, you just opened some Prism a couple days ago. Is it the hunt of good it, cards? It was, it? yeah. It's yeah. the hunt for Wimbia yeah. and, uh, you know, the Strouds and the Richardsons and, you know, it's that's, that's just it, the new hype. So yeah. if I can grab a card, and hit a silver, you know, and, and turn it into PSA and flip it real quick. Well, yeah. I'm not losing, I'm only gaining. Yeah. So uh, it's just that quick return. And, and when the hype's there, you kind of jump on the hype train. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of what I do for the, okay. the blaster situation. Okay. But mostly I try to do the hobby. So I think this is all Griffey and Jeter, every bit of it. Those are two good players. So here's the, the card Here's the card I was super yeah, that's geeked a nice out one. about. Yeah. That's your credentials. Mm -hmm. This will be interesting to grade because like they get scratches like crazy, but it's still. And I didn't find any scratches. It looks think awesome. Yeah, so that was something I pulled out of a box, and it was just there. No top loader, no penny sleeve, no nothing. 
Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Oh man, it's good to see that Griffey credentials. I mean, that is an iconic card, a card that's sought after and now seeing it in person. Man, I'm getting excited. That was a, that was a good one. What would you change in this card? I would change one thing. The background color. Myself. I changed the uniform to Mariners. Well, that too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he did a lot of good things during he, that time. Yeah, totally the 2001 did. era was good for Griffey. Totally. How much do you think you spent on the cards? I bought in a couple $4,000 collections, and I've probably put at least 20K into it myself. Okay. So probably about 30, 30 grand in the past couple years. Wow. Just to throw a number out there, I guess. And how much do you think you've sold? Not anywhere near that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've maybe made back like 10 grand on certain things. Well, on that's a lot still of pretty bigger hits. See that? The borderless cards. Because I ended up buying like one of their $500 boxes. <laughs> of course you did. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. Pretty popular guy. The horn's good. So a lot of these. You have no idea. But there's there's a good. short print. You're totally guessing. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know either, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Pokemon. Cool. Pokemon. Those are better ones up front. I have researched some of those, so they get into the couple hundred dollars when you grade them. I always thought it was Yu-Gi-Oh. 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 Yu -Gi -Oh. I don't know. Man, I don't like showing my emotion this much, but I I really love your stuff. Awesome. I really do. Uh, That's good. And so, over, oh, go ahead. What are you going to say? The binders are all organized. Um, I know you like organized stuff. <laughs> so... Those are, and those came from a collection all previously organized, labeled as far as who they are. They get. Mm hmm. Uh, okay. Yeah, you got this even. This is like numbered one out of 40. One of his auto hats from. Uh, it's kind of cool. That's incredible stuff. Uh, okay, and then this side is just the, the lesser stuff, you would say? Um, yeah. Yeah, I would think so. Um, it's a lot of stuff that I haven't had any time to really go through too much most of it there's it's just everything i don't even know how to explain it just yeah it's 89 green dawn russ um all penny sleeved you got so random um boxes that i never you know like i said oh, i bought yeah. collections so everything that i bought i just kind of put on the shelf and never really had time to go through and there's a bunch more of this kind of stuff here like i said I know it doesn't hold much value the way it sits, but there could be that possibility of hitting those one or two good gems that you could find. So I'm okay. not expecting an arm and a leg for this stuff because I know what it's worth. There's more in here? Yeah, all okay. Yeah, all these okay. are um, just full. Oh my gosh, okay. Yeah, oh, there's a bunch more different. Look at that. There's some more good uh, Pokemon. <laughs> it just goes on and on. Um, I think even under here, there's a box of random stuff it's interesting usually in collections you'll find stacks and stacks of oh, there you go there's a few yeah brad hubbard that's a good one right originals um <laughs> i don't know anything about these dude <laughs> <laughs> i know lonnie Ro Ro ronnie lott uh oj and walter payton 76. <laughs> that's too funny <laughs> We're all like, who's Brad Hubbard? Is he really good? Did I miss that? <laughs> I think I've seen his card on, uh, <laughs> yeah, Amazing. something. So, I want everything. Okay. And I know you want to sell everything. Mm -hmm. Where where do you sit with stuff? That's a good question. Um, I, there's just so much random stuff and value and et cetera. Um, I do have a couple of those other graded cards I would like to get back your way to the, um, the okay. Olympia and so we'll the Purdy, the too. 10 of 10 and okay. the Ichiro uh, Pujols and all that kind of stuff. I'd okay. like to throw back your way as well. Okay. Um, What's the number that makes you feel good today? I would like to be at 15, honestly, but uh, we'll see what we can do. I mean, yeah. to see if you can find the value in it, I guess. And that's where, yeah. where, we, where we can make an agreement. Um, I think it's kind of shooting a little high because there's a lot of stuff that isn't graded that I could have graded. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'm open to see what you think, honestly. So, so for you, 15 would include everything. Yeah. Oh yeah, every single thing in here. Yeah. And okay. there's a lot of potential. There's like a lot of boxes that we haven't got to see. Yeah. Uh, just like there's a bunch of this kind of stuff, right? Um, just everything's numbered. 
every every card here is you know so you have a bunch of stuff with potential yep i feel like you know they're a little me. bit better than I, uh, I love your i love your stuff i really do this is okay. this is the stuff that i think i can extract a lot of value out of i think so too uh, 15 is too low okay i'd like to pay you eighteen thousand dollars for it I'd be more than happy to do that. Yeah, I think that's more than fair to everybody. And yeah. I know that you have a process and it's going to take you money to package, to sell, you know, yeah. your own personal time. So I feel that that's, that's a good thing for both of us. 18 grand for yeah. everything. And then, then the four cards that you got going back to PSA. Yep. You're completely cool with that? 100%. Yeah, that helps me out. It's done deal. Yeah, awesome. 18 grand. I think it went more than fair. I think that everybody is going to benefit from this and i'm more than happy with the offer that i was given for my collection 100 well now we got to get it uh somehow into your suv this is part of the deal that we sometimes don't think about during the excitement no seriously we underestimated the space needed on this one but thankfully there was a u-haul right down the road so here we are once again loading up a u-haul What an amazing day. We discovered a gem of a town. We got to unpack a perfect collection for our team and we got to hang with an exceptional dude. I'm so glad you got to enjoy this one with us. Don't forget to check out our other great episodes right here. Keep chasing.